Hello and welcome to another edition of Lab Rats. My name is Andy Walker. I'm Sean Carruthers. And this is a show uh, where we demystify technology for those of you out there who you know love technology but don't always find it that easy. And today I have a really exciting piece of news. What is that? You switched I, to Mac? Almost, almost. I have formally moved away. I have abandoned, officially abandoned in the world, Microsoft Outlook 2007. That's a step in the right direction. I am done. What a disastrous piece of software. And I have given it four versions. I have tried. I started with Outlook 2000 and God knows what, 2000 even. And now, seven years later, finished. Had enough. So today I'm going to show you how you can migrate all of your email addresses off of Outlook and onto Gmail. And why you should do that, not just because I'm mad at, oh, uh, at Microsoft, but because web applications and uh, managing email out there in the cloud, and we'll explain what that means in a minute. A lot of people are moving to the cloud. Moving to the cloud. We'll yeah. explain what that means. It's a whole trend. So today we're going to show you how I did that, why I did that, and why you may want to consider doing it yourself. And this may be the future of technology as we know it. Well, I, I am in your hands. I have not done this. I know nothing about this. I know nothing about Outlook. I promise you, by the end of this episode, you will want to do it too. All right. All right. So we're going to get going with managing multiple email addresses in Gmail and running away from Outlook Ah! after this. So I'm going to do this whole episode without Sean because he's like, blah, 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 blah over here. It was an important topic. On what? Yep. It's about comedians. <laughs> Unrelated to, to this, because obviously there's no comedians here. <laughs> so, migrating your email to uh, Gmail from Outlook. So let's talk a bit about why we want, we, why would we want to do that in the first place. Let me you know, tell you what my scenario was. So I, had, right. I have five or six email addresses, right? All different domains. I have Andy at cyberwalker.com and Andy at labrats.tv mm. and Andy at butterscotch.com and a bunch of others that will show I can up. relate to this. Right. So each one of those inbox, you know, have their own inbox, right? So email comes into the inbox, and Outlook manages that. But here's the problem. First of all, Outlook is buggy. So if I plug something in, like an anti-spam thing, sometimes it starts, sometimes not so much. Number two, when Outlook gets, so I like to keep all my emails in one place, in one mm -hmm. file. In Outlook, there's a structure called Outlook.pst. It's the file that contains all of your contacts, all of your sent mail, all of your inbound mail. All in one gigantic one lump. One big thing, right. Except that there's a maximum file size of that file of four gigabytes. Now, no. if you, now I, I like to track my entire life inside of email, mm -hmm. right? I mean, it's like contacts and people you've talked to and deals you've done and receipts and codes and, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah, and there's, yeah, there's a whole pile of attachments in there as well. Right. People send you pictures. Right. Now, you can, Outlook has this function where it, it backs up to an, a file called archive.pst, mm -hmm. but that's not easy to search. And uh, you know, after a while, these things back up, and you forget to back them up when you change computers and that sort of thing. So you lose email over the, over the years. So it's a real pain. So ultimately, when it, get, and when it gets close to four gigabytes, mm -hmm. then the system starts to crash, and it's hard to recover and that sort of thing. So I just got fed up with it, right? Got fed up with the crashes. Uh, it's supposed to be able to easily search. Can't half the time it's indexing all the emails it's supposed to be searching. Mm -hmm. So I'm just like, enough. What out there will help me to manage all this stuff? Oh, oh, oh. Sean. A Mac? <laughs> well, I mean, there you have to talk, deal with Mac mail. It's still the same functionality. So multiple pop or IMAP email addresses in one client, mm -hmm. right, it means that if it's your email's downloaded onto this machine here and you go to your grandma's house, you may not be able to. If you haven't left, tell, told it to leave it on the server for each account, yeah. it's hard to get at. Yeah, I, I do have this problem in that I, my personal email address, uh, I check from work and I check from home and I have two machines at home. And depending on which machine I check that mail from, whether maybe even my iPhone, the first one that gets it is the only one that it appears in the mail client. Right. Even though I've set it to leave it on the server, the server says, oh, that one's already been read. Don't do download that again. So it, it is a pain. It's not ideal. So, so I looked at Gmail. I thought, well, Gmail, I have my own account. It's cyberwalker at gmail.com. Can I adapt it to use all of my email addresses? Mm -hmm. And the answer is yes. You can actually use Gmail. And let's just flip over to it right now to my Gmail account. You can actually use this to uh, go and grab copies of email from five different email address accounts, POP or IMF mm -hmm. accounts. So you said you had six, though. I did. So I had to make one compromise. Okay. And thank you for catching me out on that. I did have Andy at littlegeeks.org, mm -hmm. my sixth one. So what I did was I called the administrator of that email, and I said, listen, can you get rid of the POP account 
and just point that at Andy at um, cyberwalker.com. Okay. And so, so now, so I eliminated the, the box. I don't get a lot of email through there. Occasionally, I'll do. Mm -hmm. So, so now, so anyway, so if you go into, if you get your Gmail account, it's free, of course. You get seven and a half gigabytes of content of, of storage space. As we, uh, right, it's always going up. You can actually watch the counter going up on a second by second basis. Is that right? They're yep. increasing it. It does. So it oh. started, I think, at uh, two, and uh, it immediately started ramping up. So it's it's only a couple bytes at a time, but. Right. It's constantly going up. Well, that's great. So by the time you see this, it might be eight. It might be, yeah, exactly. Now you can buy an upgrade if you have, if you anticipate using much larger storage. You can go like um, Google offers. I think it's what is it? Uh, ten bucks for ten gigs for twenty bucks, and you mm -hmm. go all the way up to four hundred gigs for five hundred. I'm pointing over because I have a cheat sheet over here. <laughs> but yeah, four hundred gigs for one hundred fifty dollars a year. Yeah, that's storage. That's a lot of money. But if it's for a business, this is maybe a good investment. It's a very good Yeah, and the other thing, of course, is you get to use that for your Picasso picture storage and that kind of thing if you yeah. upgrade. Yeah, so it's shared. So it's shared. But so ultimately, I, I opened up my Gmail account, which is free. I mm -hmm. have seven and a half gigs of space already. Um, and then as soon as you get in there, you go into, um, go into your, your, your inbox where you already have your Gmail content. And um, I'm going to click on my settings button over here. Mm -hmm. And you can see all sort of all the behind the scenes kind of stuff. So if I click on um, my various accounts here, I can actually go in and set five different, actually multiple identities to send from. I can send to any, from any identity. As long as mm -hmm. I can confirm that I own that email address, mm -hmm. I can send from my Hotmail account or any, anything else from Gmail. Right, so that's that's the start. Can mean so it's not just funneling it all into one and then making you send back through as your Gmail. Gmail. No, you can okay. send it as an identity, right? So uh, if I click down here onto my accounts, you can see all of the identities I've created. There's the Cyberwalker, the, there's the Gmail account, mm -hmm. and then there's you know, two cows, my little geek, Cyberwalker, Butterscotch, technologytips.com is something that I, a new one I've developed recently. Mm -hmm. But as we go down here, you can see all of the, uh, the actual pop accounts it checks, the maximum of five. It doesn't offer any more right now, but mm -hmm. uh, my guess is as good, now this is the, the Google apps have just come out of beta, mm -hmm. and Gmail is part of that. So I suspect they're going to start to offer pro or paid versions of upgrades of these kinds of things. And so if you have 100 email addresses you need to manage for whatever reason, then you I suspect that'll happen have in, a, in the near future. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So it's very easy to do. All you want to do is you want to add a mail account that you own. You'll need your mail, uh, your SMTP server information. Mm -hmm. Excuse me, not your SMTP, your POP. Yeah, pop. Uh, and then your user ID and password. Mm -hmm enter it in, and then it will go out and check that account every now and then. Now, you can choose to leave. You can use a, a, do a redundancy type of thing where you can leave the mail on the pop account, mm -hmm. right, so it's not taken off of it. Or, and I've chosen to just erase it when, it, when Gmail grabs it and archive it all on Gmail. But if, you, you know, if you're uncertain about letting Gmail and Google handle all of your email and trusting that it will always be there, then you might want to create that redundancy initially. So we, we do have two options, and the way we're doing this then is potentially you use this, so now this is your main control panel, and this is how you manage all your mail. Or we can also use this as a dump box for all your other things that will create a backup for all of your other accounts, even if you choose to continue to use Outlook. That's right. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Um, um, now, you say POP. Now, does it do other uh Just POP standards? and IMAP. And will it do Exchange as well? Or? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I haven't checked that. We'll We'll, right. well, pop an IMAP for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Now, the other nice thing about it, if you go into your inbox now, as I said, I've set up five different accounts, and I've labeled each email address um, by color code. You can go over here, as you can see. If I click on the down arrow there, you can choose different color formats to identify each, uh, the source of each uh, email that comes into your inbox. Mm -hmm. So as you can see, my butterscotch uh, items here are all showing as Andy at butterscotch.com, mm -hmm. and are color coded that way, so I can see what, what the source of the account that they got it from, which is kind of nice. Now. Gmail, is not, you don't have to be, suffer the Gmail interface, the default interface. There's actually a section here where we go into settings again. There's something called uh, themes. And if I go into themes, I can actually set how this interface is going to look mm -hmm. for me. So I can customize it and make it pretty. There's one called candy here. Mm -hmm. I can candyify my, uh, my interface. I remember uh, that there was one, I think it was VT100 or something, that allows your uh, thing to go uh, all green text on a black background, like an old yeah, monitor. Terminal. There's terminal? A, there's something called okay. terminal. Let's, let's turn terminal on here. And you're gonna have a quick peek at that. Yeah, it looks uh, very retro. So <laughs> Gmail looks like one of those old. Yeah. Oh God, I I, I worked with a computer See? that uh, looked like that so many times, except it didn't have any uh, orange and blue on it at all. No, true enough. It all looks like a green terminal exactly.
So there you go. So there, so that's one of the, you know, some of the key things. I won't go into you know, too much of the detail. We do have a whole bunch of tutorials about Gmail, actually two series on uh, butterscotch.com you may want to get into, you know, the basics, how to create an account, all the way to how to use the, the application online. Mm -hmm. And then a more advanced one called, uh, you know, for, I think it's Intermediate Studies 201, we call it. Uh, and it's the more advanced things, like how to turn on the advanced features, how to engage it so that it, well, you can use it offline. That's one of the issues. Mm -hmm. If you have no internet, con internet connection, you would think that there would be no way to access your email. Well, mm -hmm. with this function that they use, uh, that they've offered through the Google Labs, you can actually give it an offline mode. So any email that you happen to be showing in your inbox, you can actually edit and prime for sending, responding, right? Now, of course, you don't get new email when it's offline. Yeah. But it allows you to use it like an offline application. So you can respond to old email that you've already gotten, potentially. Right, exactly, exactly. Or read the ones that you, you already have. So I guess uh, the big question that I'd have is this. Is this is all online. It's in the cloud now. Mm -hmm. What happens if Google goes down, God forbid? Well, good point, right? I mean, what happens if they do? Now, here's mm -hmm. the thing. Google is a big organization with lots of redundancy. You know, uh, so if somebody you know, dropped a bomb on Google, yes, you're right, that everything would go away. And mm -hmm. so there is a certain amount of you know, com um, trust you're putting in the organization. And mm -hmm. Google used to be not evil, and now it seems to be more evil. So you are relying on that. The other thing, of mm -hmm. course, is that you know, you have an email comes up about flowers for your mom, and all of a sudden you see a Google ad down the right-hand side about mm. flowers, you have to buy flowers, right? So yeah. there's that issue. There's the issue of, you know, what if Google does go down? Then you lose all of your personal your life. Yeah. So maybe well. this is, uh, now you mentioned that you can have uh, Google pull from the other email accounts and then erase it from those accounts. So maybe that's a good reason why you'd maybe not want to erase it from those other accounts. Some completely. people, if you don't have the trust, if you're really concerned about you know, the idea of Google going away one day mm -hmm. and taking all of your personal life with you, then yeah, you may want to set it up so that those accounts you know, still actually um, leave copies on the server or set up a, a separate Google account. Oh, well, that wouldn't work, would it? No. <laughs> but, uh, but some other way right, to, 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 uh, to make sure that you know, you're taken care of uh, and all of your stuff's archived in some other way. Uh, maybe leave Outlook running and let, it, let that be the, the backup. So, so maybe the goal is not so much to stop using Outlook altogether, but stop using it as your main way of interacting with your mail. Right. So it can be there as a backup, pulling the, the mail for you. That's right. Well, exactly. And one final advantage, I think, that is really worth talking about here is the ubiquity of your email. Mm -hmm. So it means no matter where you go, uh, you can access your email. And you can access what you've sent to other people. And you, you know, there is, there is no, oh, my email's on my other machine. I can't get at it. Mm -hmm. Now, that was a big feature for me and why I finally I did move. Mm -hmm. Because on my iPhone, I was trying to set it up, mobile me, sending me copies of my email to, to my iPhone, you know, using the Apple application. It would never work properly for me. Now I just click on the Google. In fact, I'll show you if I can find my, my iPhone here. I've actually taken the, the mail icon away from mm -hmm. my, from my uh, iPhone, and I've put the, uh, the Google application there as the, as the primary uh, access to, um, to my mail now mm -hmm. on, on the, the bar along the bottom. Because when I click on that, there's my mail. It's all of my mail, and it's always there. So it's a fantastic utility. That sounds convenient. Again, if you trust Google to stick around and you trust them not to do anything evil with your data. Have I sold you? I'm not sure. I'm a bit paranoid. I'm, I'm still remembering back a few years ago, there was this viral video called Epic 2014 that uh, talked about, you know, Google seemed like it wasn't a good idea at that point, but they had other plans and they were, they were going to enslave humanity eventually. It's still available online if you want to go see it, but I'm, I'm not so sure. I, I do like the fact that, uh, that I'm not trusting all of my email into one place. It, it seems like a good idea for a backup, but I'm not sure. Mind right. you, I'm not fighting with Outlook either, so that's uh, it's true. You're on the Mac. I am on the mail. Get a Mac, that's all. It sounds like a good idea to me. <laughs> all right, well, let's take a break. When we come back, we have picture time, and we have a very special letter we want to share from you from a very important person that we got uh, for our set here at Lab Rats. Well, that's after this. I'm doing my email now, man. You got to carry the show. Okay, I guess this is what happens when you uh, do a show about email. He's like Captain ADD. Every time his computer goes ding, he's like looking back at it. So he's well, you got to you got to join me here. You had something to show us. I did. Yeah, I sure you did. Speaking of letters, so we got an, a lovely letter from the mayor of Mike, uh, the mayor of Bradford. His name is Mike Hancock when we were down at the PC Museum. 
uh, presented to us by one of the city councillors, uh, Chris, I think his name was. Mm -hmm. So, you know, he writes a really lovely letter to us and he says, you know, welcome, it's his pleasure to welcome us to the city of Brantford and, you know, talked about the, the fact that the city is the tournament capital of Ontario. It's where the telephone was invented, yada, yada, yada. So I just thought that was a nice, it was a nice, you know, gesture to give us a, a very pretty framed yeah, letter we I, put on our I set. think somewhere on the letter as well, it said that the comically oversized keys to the city are in the mail. Okay, good. I think they've gone missing somewhere. All right, well, we're going to put it up with Elmo up here. Elmo loves letters. I love Brantford. All right. <laughs> okay, don't forget, you, know, you can send us letters to feedback at TV. You could do that, too. Mm -hmm. But what we really want you to do is to send us impressions of our show, right? Yeah. So not, not like, I think the show is pretty good. No, like, do an impression of me and, and Sean. Get your brother or your cousin or your your coworker or your the ne neighbor next door to come in and set up a little set and do a two minute impression of Sean and I doing lab rats. It'd be yeah. kind of fun. And, and then, if you can do a better impression of us than we did we, of Elmo, that would be great. That would be fantastic. Don't forget, you can win one of these fabulous new butterscotch mugs. And in fact, not only will we give you the butterscotch mug, we will give you a butterscotch t-shirt and a sticker book as well while supplies last. But definitely the mug. What a deal! If we show your video on the web. So ultimately what you want to do is send us an email to Elmo loves getting impressions of Sean and Andy <laughs> at, at labrats.tv. Or more simply, feedback at labrats.tv. And include a link, uh, you know, post the video on, uh, on YouTube um, and uh, include a link so that we can go check it out. And if we use it on the show, you win a fabulous prize. The mug is yours. The mug is all yours. All right. Good. There we go. And we have picture time, right? We have picture okay. time, as always. Good stuff. And uh, first up, we have Tyler. And Tyler in this photograph is age seven. Awesome. But he is actually now nine. But this is still a pretty good photograph. It is a pretty good photograph. He is shooting webs. Woohoo! <laughs> so there you go. Where is he from? Do we know? Uh, we do not know. You need to tell us where you're from. Tell us all those details. Where, where you're from and what your name is and you know, what you're doing right now. We can tell that he's doing the Spider-Man thing, but sometimes we have no clue what's going on. Right. Okay. So send all the details. Super. We also have a uh, desktop right here. It looks like a, a nice, uh, is that a Windows 7 desktop or a Vista? Oh, it is Windows 7 down the corner. And that is from our viewer, David. And David's in Sussex, New Jersey. Oh, so there you go. Awesome. All the details included right there. Send us your pictures of you, you yourself, your kids, pets, your rats. Your rats? What rats? Send your rats in. Rats. <laughs> Uh, your desktops, uh, your gadgets, whatever you want to send us, just you want, you want to show off on the show, and we'll, uh, we'll send you a, a T-shirt uh, to you if you like. And you, can, you can do that by sending it to feedback at livearts.tv. In case we haven't sent it enough on the show already. All right, that's it for us this week. My name is Andy Walker. I'm Sean Carruthers. Uh, thanks for tuning in, pushing play. We love you guys. We'll see you next time. Are you ready? Are you all rolling? Let's do that again. Oh, yeah. Oh. Let's do that again. This, this time with actual uh, clickage. Click in the take two. Clack.